Hey everybody, thanks for joining me. I'm Mike Drodis, Bible teacher and preacher, and you have tuned into my YouTube channel, Solving the Prophetic Puzzle. We are living in exciting times, especially if you are a student of end time events, eschatology, and Bible prophecy. We are seeing things happen on a, on a weekly basis, unfold right before our eyes. We are living in a time period right before the seven year tribulation period, right before Daniel's 70th week. These are times to be on high alert for the rapture. These are times to be on high alert for Bible prophecy. We need to stay in the word of God and continue to discern what the Lord is telling to us right now in the present. In Revelation chapter 5, verse 1, we read that John saw a, a, a vision of heaven and he saw... Um, Someone on the throne in Revelation chapter 5, verse 1. And I saw in the right hand of him who sat on the throne a scroll written inside and on the back sealed with seven seals. John saw in this revelation someone sitting on the throne and they had a scroll. Now, in Bible days, when there was a king or a very rich person and he wanted to send a message somewhere and to keep it private, he would write his message out on the paper. Then he would roll it up. And then he would put a seal on it and hand it off to the person to deliver the message to whom he wanted uh, to get it to. When, when the person received the, the sealed scroll, he would break open the seal and he would read the message. John saw a scroll, but it was sealed not with one, but seven seals. And it appeared that no one in the entire universe was worthy to open the scroll until Jesus Christ, the Lamb slain before the foundation of the world, was able to and was and, and, and accepted that scroll. John then sees that the scroll is being opened. Now, now listen to this. In Revelation chapter 6, the seals are opened. In order to read the scroll, all seven seals have to be opened. There is no other way to read the scroll until the seven seals are open, each one of them. And John accounts as each seal is opened up. What happens when that seal is opened up? One of my critics, and I do have many critics, sent me a text message one time, and he said these words. I won't give you his name, but he, 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 he wrote to me and he said, Wrong. Capital letters. Wrong. Seven seals for seven years. One seal per year. Repent from teaching. Believe it or not, that's one of the more more nice ones that I get from critics who constantly talk to me about teaching and preaching about the Bible on YouTube. That can't be true, though. You cannot open, you cannot read the scroll until all seven seals were open. Nowhere does it say that the first seal being opened begins the seven-year tribulation period, also known as Daniel's 70th week. It doesn't say that anywhere. We have just supposed that as something that is as truth because we've been told that year after year after year. We know what exactly begins Daniel's 70th week. We read about it in, in Daniel chapter 9, verse 27. When the man of sin, the man of perdition, signs a covenant or ratifies a covenant with the many, we know at that point in time that Daniel's 70th week or the seven-year tribulation period begins. Then some would say, well, Revelation chapter 6, verse 1. Now I saw the lamb open one of the seals, and I heard one of the four living creatures say with a voice like thunder, come and see. And I looked and behold, a white horse. He who sat on it had a bow and a crown was given to him. And he went out conquering and to conquer. And some of you have, have maybe even heard this as well. You would say, aha, the rider on the white horse is the Antichrist. It's symbolic for the Antichrist. Okay, that's stretching it a little bit. But I understand where this teaching comes from. I myself was taught this years ago in the 1980s. When I was a brand new Christian, I was trying to uncover and understand the book of Revelation. And I went to elders and teachers older than me in the Lord. And I said, what about this sixth seal? And they said to me something like this. They said, Mike, the rider on the white horse is either Jesus Christ 
as he goes forth conquering and conquering and, and winning people to, to salvation, or it could be the Antichrist. We're just not sure. It could be the Antichrist because in Revelation chapter 19, we find out that Jesus does come back riding on a white horse. So it probably isn't Jesus in Revelation chapter 6. It's probably the Antichrist imitating Jesus, uh, riding on a white horse, imitating him to try to conquer the world. And we have followed that teaching ever since. We believe whenever you talk to somebody, you, you look at them and they say, rider on the white horse, Antichrist. No in, ins, ups, or buts about it. It's the Antichrist. Let me tell you something. Just because somebody says something over and over and over again doesn't necessarily make it true. We're walking and we're looking at, at, at something that has been taught as dogma, that it can't be altered, that, that there is no alternative, that the rider on the white horse is the Antichrist, and that's it. And I propose to you that maybe, possibly, it's not the only alternative for the rider on the white horse. The book of Revelation it was written so that, that uh, things would be revealed to us as we get closer and closer to the end of all things. If you already got everything figured out and you know the rider on the white horse is the Antichrist, if you already know all that, then you don't need the book of Revelation. Let's look at the white horse for a minute. I've already done a video on this. I've already explained what I think it is, but I'll go over it again. I can tell you in, in that video, I told you what I think it is, and I told you what I don't think it is, and I don't think the rider on the white horse is the Antichrist. Let's look at it. Verse 2, And I looked, and behold, a white horse, he who sat on it had a bow, and a crown was given to him, and he went out conquering and to conquer. First thing we notice is that this rider on the white horse has a bow, and a crown was given to him. And he went out conquering the world. Since 2000, we have seen a plague that has come upon the earth, that has shut down countries. It has destroyed businesses. It's ruined economies. It's killed millions of people. It made millions more sick. It's divided people and families. This plague is called Corona. The same word for crown. He was given a Corona. He was given a crown. This rider on the white horse also carried a bow. A bow shoots arrows, shoots arrows, shoots arrows, and he is wearing white. But I don't want to talk about the rider on the white horse right now. I believe that we have seen the first seal open, and now I believe that we are seeing the second seal open. As we move into 2022, I believe that the second seal of Revelation is going to be open very soon. Revelation chapter 6, verse 3, the second seal. When he opened the second seal, I heard the second living creature say, Come and see. Another horse, fiery red, went out, and it was granted to the one who sat on it to take place take peace from the earth, and that people should kill one another, and there was given to him a great sword. Three things that we see on this rider on the red horse. He was able to take peace from the earth. He was able to take peace from the earth. People should kill one another. And a great sword was given to him. Look at Matthew chapter 24. Matthew chapter 24. Jesus is talking about signs of his coming. And he says in Matthew chapter 24, verse 6, And you will hear of wars and rumors of wars. See that you are not troubled. And that's what I, the message I want to get across today. We are going to hear about wars and rumors of wars. But don't be troubled. Don't be upset. Don't be worried. See that you are not troubled, for all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. For a nation will rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom, and there will be famines and pestilence and earthquakes in various places. 
All these are the beginning of birth pains. These are the beginning of birth pains. I believe that, that we should be spiritually prepared for this second seal being opened. We will hear of wars and rumors of wars. We'll see nation against nation, even nation itself against its own self. We'll see nations against other nations. We'll see kingdoms against kingdoms. This is both natural and this is spiritual. We will see the kingdom of darkness against the kingdom of light, the kingdom of God against the kingdom of Satan. We will see wars and rumors of wars. There will be fighting between people, groups that are even in the same country. There will be unrest. There will be strife, along with lockdowns and more surveillance. These are things that we will see when the red horse begins to ride, when the second seal is open. Jesus said, these are the beginning of sorrows or the beginning of birth pains. We know that when a lady is getting ready to give birth, the birth pains get more frequent and more intense as the time of delivery is, is going to happen. We are going to see more intense wars. We're going to hear more rumors of wars, and we're going to see more frequent as this red horse begins to ride. Now the good news is we have Christ, and he has us. When you have Christ, whether you live or die, you still win. We still win. Whether we live or die, we still live in Christ. Luke chapter, I want to close with this verse. Luke chapter 21, verse 25. And there will be signs in the sun and in the moon and in the stars and on the earth, distress of nations with perplexity, the sea and the waves roaring, men's heart failing them from fear and the expectation of those things which are coming on the earth for the powers of the heavens will be shaken. Then they will see the Son of Man coming in a cloud with power and great glory. Now, when these things begin to happen, look up and lift up your heads because your redemption draws near. That's where we're living at right now. That's what's happening right now. We need to look up. We need to, to, to be ready. Our redemption is drawing near. Thank you for watching this video. Thank you for commenting. If you haven't liked or subscribed yet, please do. I fully intend to continue preaching and teaching about the end times and especially about the rapture. I believe that that is my mission right now is to tell people about the rapture and get them ready and get them prepared for what's coming in the very near future. I will continue to say this. Get ready, get ready, get ready. Keep looking up. He is coming soon. Thanks for watching. God bless you.